following is an animated representation of functions of the Penadrill tool. The tools are connected to the tubing at surface and run into the well. They are then positioned to the desired depth for the first tunnel and the mechanical anchor is set to prevent tool movement at any time during the operating sequence. The operator will then use the surface pump usually supplied by penetrators to build pressure in the tubing which will activate the kickover foot, index the milling cutter up into position and begin rotating to mill the hole in the steel casing. It will take about two minutes to make the hole. The hole is clean, burr free and because it was created in a low force manner causes no damage or distortion to the casing nor does it damage the cement layer around the casing. The operator will then lower the pressure and the milling cutter will be retracted back into the tool housing and indexed down. During this indexing procedure the tool does not move in relation to the casing only the internal index carriage moves. This indexing will bring a bit guide into alignment with the hole that has just been milled in the casing. The operator will then bring the pressure back up and on this sequence the flexible drill stem and diamond rock bit will begin rotating and extending to drill a tunnel into the formation for a distance of up to two meters. Circulation is maintained down the inside of the drill stem and out the rock bit in order to cool the bit and flush cuttings from the tunnel. The tubing to casing annulus will be left open at the surface to prevent pressure buildup against the formation, casing or BOP. Fluid returns, if any, will travel back up the annulus to the rig tank. The treatment can be performed while the well is underbalanced. As long as the well is not sour and providing that any fluid or gas returns to surface can be controlled without closing in the annulus. Once the drilling is complete, the operator will lower the pressure and then raise it again, shifting the valving mechanism and retracting the drill stem and bit back into the tool housing. During retraction, the drill stem continues to rotate and circulation is maintained out the bit. Lowering the pressure one more time will reset the control section in preparation for the next casing milling sequence. The tool may then be repositioned and reoriented to make the next tunnel. The entire milling and drilling procedure to make one tunnel normally takes and requires that less than one cubic meter of fluid be pumped down the tubing. The maximum required pressure is about 24 MPA or 3500 PSI. When all the tunnels are complete, the circulating valve at the top of the tool is opened and the tool is ready for retrieval. In general, drilling fluids should be clean and sweet. Light oils are a good choice, but the tools are capable of operating with fresh or brine waters. Water methanol blends, various crude oils, frac oils, diesel, and so on. The more important consideration in fluid choice is the reservoir. The Penadrill system presents an opportunity to drill into new pay using a light compatible fluid, often while the well is in an underbalanced condition. Here we show the major components of the Penadrill tool set up for a function test at Penetrator's facility in Red Deer. The tools are connected via a high pressure hose to one of Penetrator's pumping units parked just outside the shop. The first segment is the control section, followed by the motor section, then the drill section, and at the end, the mill section. Most of the visible functions occur at the mill section, so we will focus on that location. Zooming in closer, we see the gold-colored mill cutter, which is used to drill the hole in the steel casing. And just above the cutter, we see the exit hole of the bit guide. The rock drill bit and flexible drill stem will come out of this hole and pass through the hole in the casing to drill the communication tunnel into the formation. This is a piece of common 139.7 millimeter or 5 and 1 half inch oil well casing with some existing penadrill holes from previous testing. We will slip it onto the mill section and drill a new hole. We have marked the casing with a white circle to show the approximate location of the new hole. The operator has engaged the pumping equipment and is beginning to build pressure in the control section which will cause it to shift and direct flow to the mill section. 
the milling cutter will index up, and as the operator continues to increase pressure, the cutter will begin extending outwards to cut the hole in the casing. During this procedure, there is considerable flow from the hydraulic motor exhaust and from fluid used to cool the mill cutter and flush away cuttings. It would take about two minutes to cut the holes, so we will edit out a portion of this procedure. The pilot tip of the mill cutter will come through the casing first, followed shortly by the main body of the cutter. As the cutter breaks through and completes the hole, cooling and flushing fluid will begin to spray out. When the hole is complete, the operator will decrease pumping pressure and the cutter will be retracted. Continuing to decrease pressure will activate the indexing function, moving the mill cutter down and bringing the exit hole of the bit guide into alignment with the hole in the casing. The operator will now increase pressure to extend the flexible drill stem and rock bit through the hole we've just made. For the purposes of this demonstration, the drill stem will be extended for only a short distance since there is no lateral support out in the open air. Under actual conditions, the drill stem receives support from the tunnel it is just drilled. Pressure will now be decreased to shift the control section and then increase for the final time of this sequence to retract the rock bit back into the tool. The drill stem rotates as it is retracting and fluid flow is maintained out the rock bit. We will now repeat portions of the previous demonstration and add in the actual drilling of a mortar test target. Again, we will use a piece of common oil well casing, and as before, we have circled the approximate location of the new hole to be milled in the casing sample. Now, a test target of high compressive strength cement mortar, approximately one meter long, will be positioned adjacent to the casing and strapped to the tool body. The casing milling sequence is underway. Again, portions of this demonstration will be edited. The operator has completed milling the hole in the casing. He will now begin drilling the tunnel in the target. This is all being done in a quiet and gentle manner. The cuttings are continually being washed back to the annular space between the tool and the casing. The tunnel drilling sequence has been underway for about three minutes, and the rock bit will be coming through the target soon. As the bit exits the target, we will zoom in on the drill stem and the rock bit for a closer look. The tunnel diameter is approximately three quarters of an inch. It will be flushed clean and is not compacted or damaged in any way. The operator will now retract the drill stem and rock bit back into the tool. In a downhole situation, the tool could now be repositioned in the well bore. There would be no pressure on the system while the tool was being moved. Moving the target aside, we can see the fresh hole in the casing and the entrance to the tunnel in the target. The target has a radius of 12 centimeters or about 5 inches and the tunnel stayed well within that radius over its 1 meter length. At this point the control section has been reset and would be ready to begin the next casing milling operation if so desired. Some advantages of the Penadrill tool system. It represents a greater opportunity to reach beyond the damaged near well bore area and to intersect natural fractures near the well bore. A penadrill treatment is non-damaging to the casing, cement, or formation. There is no debris or compaction. There is no impact or explosion. This is a gentle method of achieving deep penetration. To this is the desired results. The penadrill system is worthy of consideration as a possible solution. The tool has found good application in wells with skin damage or thin zones with poor boundaries where further stimulation would be too risky. It has been used to increase the effective well bore radius, reducing drawdown and helping to prevent coning. The Penadrill tool has proven particularly effective at improving injectivity rates in injection and disposal wells. 
It has also been used for frack initiation in zones that are difficult to break down or exhibit excess perforation friction pressures. The long pristine tunnels and the low force manner of the penadrill system can be a valuable tool for production companies in their efforts to efficiently draw hydrocarbons from the world's ever maturing oil and gas fields. For additional information, please contact Penetrators Canada Incorporated at this address.